<laughs> Peter Stefan, welcome to LOT 360. I'm with uh, legendary o OGT. OGT. How are you doing? Pete, it's a pleasure. Pleasure to be here. Yes, life thank you, life. sir. Thank Terrorist you, sir. Production. Yes, sir. Uh, mental health awareness. Now, you've seen the introduction. You've seen how this started. You see the organic realism of how we're coming, how we're expressing ourselves, the things we're about. And as owner of Life on Life Terms, my, my dedication is to everybody viewing. My dedication is to gentlemen right here, OGT, which is the host of Life on Life Terms. But I just want to let you all know before we begin this in the interview, it's an honor. Once again, it is a Likewise. honor. It's a pleasure, it like I said, to honor. be here. Yes. Always. And in tradition of Hispanic Heritage Month, I'm Puerto Rican. He's Puerto Rican. And I want to extend it out even again to say, welcome, you made it. Yes. Meaning you made it. How discouraged, how many out there that may not have the direction, may not have the focus, may not have representation, may not have whatever. But I say this for all people, we're coming, we're here, and we're beginning. So with that being said, OGT, can you let the fans know let not the fans, excuse me, not the fans. Let the people know how, um, how, 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 how did it start for you with life on life terms from your mouth? From my mouth, well, <laughs> my boy here, the producer Pete, nice, um, made me aware of the production that he was uh, gonna start, and he asked me to assist him to be an assistant producer with him. Um, to make a long story short, I ended up going to the studio. Uh, a couple of the hosts didn't show up, and I was a uh, boomerang. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> into hosting. To say the that least. Day. To say the to, least. <laughs> definitely to, to say, say the, the least. least. Yes. But but it was interesting because, um, I, you know, I'm a sociable person. It's something I never done. Mm -hmm. You understand? But um, it, it was very interesting, and and to know that what. I was slingshotted into <laughs> was to help others you understand like we all suffer from mental issues we all have stress anxieties we all have yes, issues sir. nobody yes, can yes, deny sir. that yes, so um, I definitely felt it was part of my duty you know as a human being to support this group and support all those out there that view us that that will be getting on our websites you understand that feel certain a certain way or a certain medical condition or mental condition that you know they could join our group and we can discuss issues and problems you know not only the fact that we would discuss them but there might be someone who had a similar issue and they didn't know how to resolve it and through these communications and networking and by word of mouth you know they heard someone else's story which was similar to theirs and they were they um, were better to understand how to deal with that problem and have a solution for it through others. So you know it, it's it's a it's it's an honor to be here and and you know to help one another out here as human beings. Yeah, you know? and and shout out to my cousin Geneva. She said, S "Sit up, don't slouch. You're young." <laughs> <sighs> Shame on the mess. <laughs> That's my favorite phrase. Now, my favorite now, phrase. Now, now, LOT 360 has hosts. We have Yvette LeBoy, which is a holistic health coach. She'll be coming on uh, October 9th. We have OGT. He's LOT 360 host. We have, we have Todd Goldfinger. He's doing an excellent series on psychedelic drugs, on mental wellness. We have Ash. He's, he's doing uh, LOT 360's part in entertainment, and we have the great Marcus Sanchez. Now, Marcus Sanchez is incredible because he's bilingual and he can go in both directions in terms of speaking, and he's also LOT 360 host. So, the gentleman right here, OGT, um, how, in your experience with LOT 360, Life on Life Terms, Life on Life Terms is a production. We made a program called LOT 360. How was it when you got ousted in in Verona? Shout out to Verona. Verona, if you out there. Yes. You, you see, grabbed him. He you, came to the door and said, come here. Start. Yeah. You started it all. Yeah. And, and, and let she me. She just snatched me up from the chair and says, 
I'm gonna mic you up and you're in. <laughs> yeah, and, and let me be clear, it's about him, not about me as a, as a, as as I interview him, but she grabbed him. And because his energetic personality, because the person he is and the experience he is, how was that? Like you got grabbed in, you came to the door, it was like cuz we're studio based. We do our productions in studio. So, you know, just to put it out there. So, how it, was it for it you? It was definitely unexpected. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it was definitely unexpected. And, and like I said before, it was a good experience. And, and that's what, you know, gave me, you know, the acknowledgement of what's really going on in this world and, and how we can all participate to help one another. Mm. So, and, you and, know. And, that, and, that's, that, and, that's, and that's important because help. You hear him talk, you hear the buzz. He's a, murder, he's a man of the community. He's a man of experience, a man of the streets, man across the board. Why, T? Why help? Why? I was born and raised in New York. There you go. Okay. These always have been my stomping grounds. I was born in the city and raised in the Bronx. Okay. I, I lived in, in Cretona. As I recall, I was I was like Forrest Gump. I wore braces on my legs. No, I'm sorry. Hit that, you know, I ran and broke off for the so like Forrest Gump no, like the movie. Is he faster than you? Movie. If you was to race nah. him, is it not? Nah, uh, man. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> they call me the road run after sure, that. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I grew up in the city and and I experienced a lot, saw a lot, you know, and and, and a lot of these issues have been out here for many years, centuries, basically, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now we, with all the technology and, and all the doctors and, and everything we have out there now, you know, there's a lot of help, but there's more help that can always be, you know, furnished, you understand, because so many of us suffering from these issues. Mm. And, um, mm. you know, growing up in the Bronx, I, I saw a lot, learned a lot. I grew up um, in Morris Avenue for a few years, one eighty first. Respect. By eight years old, we were living in uh, Tremont and Harrison, which is basically where I grew up. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's where my life really began. Okay. You understand? At, at that time, um, my mom became a single mom with five five kids. Okay, I raised my hand. So same thing, raised by a single I, mom. Um, and that's pretty tough. Started right? at a young yeah. age. Yeah. At eight years old, I started working in the candy wow. stores and the grocery stores. How okay. much were the comic books back then? Oh man, they were like a nickel. Look at that. You Look understand? That. Like. You got two pieces of candy for a penny. Sure. Like it was incredible and mm -hmm. it was the best candies ever <laughs> back then. Mm -hmm. You know, not like now, basically everything artificial. Shame mm -hmm. on the mess. Yeah, shame but, on the mess. Um, Respect. You Respect. know, I, I grew up in Harrison and Tremont. You understand? Started meeting the fellas in the neighborhood. You know, became the leader of the pack. Sure. We all called ourselves Harry because we grew up in Harrison. Okay. You understand? I attended PS26 okay. on Burnside. My first experience out there being in a gang, I was also eight years old. The first gang I ever joined was the Junior Spades. Mm. Okay, in our neighborhood, there weren't any. If we had started to check, if then. we had sound, if we had video effects, the heat will be raising right about now. If you true, not true. If you grew up in the Bronx, the name Junior Spades, etc., you start getting more context more culture to the conversation so um gang what does that mean back then gangs were like a, a not only a brotherhood sure but we served as as you know protectors and lookouts for the community mm. we looked out for our neighborhood Golden Nuggets is being dropped. Golden Nuggets is being dropped. We, we, we looked out. We made sure that everyone in the community, whether you were Jewish, because we lived around Jewish, Irish, uh, African Americans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Italians, mm -hmm. you understand? And it was a very diverse neighborhood, which was great because, you know, everybody looked out for one another. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was, you know, during the 70s also. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Where you could actually, on hot days, everyone would sleep with their doors open in the building. Mm -hmm. You didn't worry about anyone coming in to rob you, rape your sisters, or ca cause any type of harm. There was always somebody out there from the neighborhood, from the community, mm -hmm. that was looking out. Mm -hmm. You understand? It wasn't just hanging out, it was looking out. 
You understand? So, so and they consider was, that loitering, right? They consider, I mean, not back then it wasn't loitering, but nowadays it's like you try to hang it. You try to, today. I feel you try to congregate. You try to come together. It's loitering. But back then, that wholesome feel. What can you say about that wholesome feel? Especially talking in the streets and everything. It was a different time from now. It was a different time, and the community was a family. Mm. It was a family. Okay. <laughs> The racism didn't exist within the community. Anyone who needed it knew that they could depend on everyone in the community. Mm. Okay, everyone was taking care of one another. Mm. You see what I'm saying? There was no discrimination whatsoever. Mm. Okay, it was a sense of it was a sense of community. Of course. It, I mean, I grew up in the projects back then. It was a sense of community: white, green, yellow, race, creed, color. Um, it was a sense of community. But, but what I'm curious about is how did that come about? Why not the hate? Like today you see the word hate thrown around like it. And, and I'm sorry, I'm, a talk, I'm talking a little bit. I want to just emphasize there's a disconnect between Gen Z, millennials, and baby boomers, and, and, and older and younger. These are nuggets, jewels, information for all those watching who have not hit that age, who have not hit that plateau. So this is valuable. This is so valuable. And to get the essence of the 70s, 80s, 90s growing up, and you look at today, we can always go back to kind of take the pieces from this conversation to, to apply to today. So how, how, how was it between the, the younger generation and, and you growing up? Well, the younger generation back in those days looked up to the older generation. Real talk. We, we took advice. Mm. You understand? And if you didn't, they gave you what you call a cocotazo. <laughs> a cocotazo, mira aquí. A little knot on your head. You understand? <laughs> For me, it was a get, wedgie or a charlie horse. They hung me on the get, fence. <laughs> get that brain functioning. Now you got a slap in the back of your neck. <laughs> yes, yes. But yes. <laughs> you understand? You, you follow the elders. You follow the elders. You understand? Elders. And, and, and you went by tradition, you know, of how your parents grew up and so forth so, and so on. And, and you followed it until you yourself became an adult and thought for yourself and did what you had to do. Was it more getting beaten back then or was it more a conversation? Oh, no. Because that's that's important, <laughs> I feel. I mean, back, you know. Back then, you got your ass beat. Yeah. <laughs> Mom ooh, didn't play ooh. that. Uh, well, I was called homie to play that. Yeah, and she yeah, didn't. Yeah. I mean, you know. Um, I love my mother. You know, and, 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 and that aspect, that also helped yes, sir. In, in, being, in growing up and being raised. Mm. Okay, because all in all, it kept you in line. You understand? You did something wrong. You know, when you got home, it was on. You mm. see what I'm saying? So you pay the consequences, but you made that one mistake once. Mm. You understand? These mm. days. Oh, you mean tell me you get the look? The look, <laughs> the belt. Never mind the look. It was the leather belt, <laughs> cable. It didn't matter. Yes. But, you know, uh, you know, it was strong women, there were strong women that had to do what they had to do. Sure. They were playing the role of both. Sure. Mom and dad. Mm. So, you know, I, I went through mine, and but it was cool. <laughs> you know, I accepted it, and but it kept us in line. How, how do you think that was for mothers playing? Now, now, let's be clear. Today, you may be experiencing it. You may know of it. If you have a two-parent household and everything's great, more power to you, and I'm happy for you, and... Um, Hopefully that can be infectious and let other people. How do you think it was for the mother who's playing both roles? From from you looking up and being like, wow, well, yeah, please, because there's mothers out there watching. It's it's the same as it is now for every okay. mother. Okay, that's fair. You know, it's a tough role. Yeah, it's it tough. definitely is. Mm, much you respect understand? to all the mothers it, out there. And and the difference back then, um, not to to degrade or, or, sure, sure, or sure. Yeah, put yeah. anything into the system and yeah. ACS or whatever sure, the case no may be. No but back then, mm -hmm. okay, um, it wasn't social service like that. You had wow, offices yeah. in the street, wow. you understand? And if they saw you spanking your kid or whatever, they would come and ask you, you know, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Oh, that um, he just stole a bag of chips. Or slap him one more time for me. You understand? It wasn't where people were calling it what we call now ACS, okay, mm -hmm. child services. You understand? And I feel that, you know, um, back then it served a purpose and it still would serve a purpose depending 
on what the parent is going to do to the child. You see True. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But back then, that was a way of being reprimanded, and it worked. Mm -hmm. You understand? And, and, the, and the mothers that were single, you know, having the support from the police department, the community, because other community members would see, and they would know what's going on, okay? And they would also reprimand your kid. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If another community member, okay, saw your kid, doing anything wrong mm -hmm. they had the right through your mother mm -hmm. and everyone else in the community to reprimand you o ogt we're gonna cut away we'll be right back after these commercial messages